The British people have spoken and the answer is we're out. The sun has risen on an independent, united kingdom. Brexit means Brexit. I've got my country back. Winston Churchill would be proud of us. There's hundreds of billions of dollars, thousands of laws that needed to get sorted out. Angela Merkel declared that Britain's vote marked a watershed moment for European integration. 65% now think we'll get a bad deal. We need to deliver the benefits of leaving to the poorest in our nation. If we do not deliver frictionless trade, thousands of jobs will go. Immediately after Brexit, I think it can only be worse. But one hopes in the long term, then maybe it will be better. Brexit would help the country full stop, um, definitely for the outcome I am. Because I think that the country needs to stand on its own two feet. Um, we do have an awful lot of foreigners here, which is fine, it's not a problem, but I think that it can get to a stage where there's too many. I think austerity was what led us to Brexit, to be honest. I think with the austerity the Conservative government brought in, I think it was too quick and too much, and it divided us as a people. We're not going to talk about which way we voted. We're not going to talk about rerunning the referendum. We're going to keep that off the table. This is just Barnet, Brexit and Barnet going forward. The issues, challenges and impact of Brexit on Barnet and us and our connection with Barnet. We have tried to identify different realities. So we have uh, added to this, this uh, study, we have Barnet, but we also have Television in, in Wales, which is more of an agrarian area with the uh, universities. We have Southampton, which is a port. We have some ex-mining areas like Pendle and Mansfield. And we have seen that the picture is it's quite different in many senses. There are commonalities. So yeah, so this is a little bit uh, my, my, my speech about the, the project and uh, because some of the things we may discuss today uh, will be local impact and may not resonate with happens as well but some other things yeah they, they will find connections with this as well one of the things that i think doesn't quite come out of the report but which is very important is the chilling effect that the brexit vote has had on community relations um, Although the debate on immigration in absolute terms is focused on EU nationalism, um, a lot of the talk about immigration is very loose and there in some quarters is a non-spoken assumption that since we've had a vote, we can now kick them all out. But what has happened since the Brexit vote is that People feel they have license to speak this stuff, yes. to say this stuff. And it will inevitably affect public services because um, staff, you know, people who we need from other countries, whether they're EU nationals or whether they're from outside, will feel that this is a hostile environment in which to work and they won't want to come here. And our public services will suffer as a result. And I think. Look, you know, this is what worries me. I don't want Barnet broken by Brexit. The nurses, we, we know for a fact um, that, 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 that you know that, that the, the, the NHS trusts here are, 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 have, have, have had a huge drop in in, uh, in um, EU nurses, and not just EU nurses who are going to come here. So that is both, um, I think, extremely sad for Britain as a whole, but absolutely it has a tangible effect on, on us personally and, and, and the community that we. That to be specific on, on violent issues, my wife is the chairman of governors at a local primary school. So if we talk about how Brexit will affect her primary school, um, or how it will affect schools, um, first of all, there are teachers who are um, EU nationals. Now, at the moment, no one can tell them, no one can tell Alex here, what their status is going to be on the 30th of March. There is a very real um, chance that 
we will have teachers who are teaching our children who on the 30th of March 2019 are illegal immigrants. Uh -huh. yeah. Through no fault of their own. The, 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 the demographic, and I'm 100% of Murati, the demographic of our borough is one of diversity. There are a number of pupils who um, have, uh, through no fault of their own, they're going to school who potentially will be in the same situation. The other thing that's absolutely tangible is these schools, you know, when, when my wife pulls her hair out about, you know, the funding that is available for those schools, we know for a fact that there will be less funding available to our councils for all of the things that they do. By definition, we should assume that there will be less money going into the schools and they're already underfunded. Anywhere in finance, EU funded? Like, like, not totally personal, but I've been to Charles Hill, which is, um, a really exciting place to be. Um, it's got a really fantastic residence association. Mm -hmm. And they had some cladding, and it was sort of falling off, and they had to take it off. Um, so that's going to be kind of funded out of somewhere else uh, once the European Social Fund done. And when I was looking for work, the European Social Fund funded that program. It put a lot of money in. I think it was like £20,000 per course. One, one issue for me is is that um, in terms of the library closing, I, I know that libraries in the countries have been struggling for a while. Yeah. But one issue for me is that the government doesn't have a plan to replace this money, or at least they haven't told us about it. So we may be in a situation where it may have actually been the case that funds like the European Social Fund and the Development Fund were actually <coughs> propping up local amenities that the government wasn't paying for. Um, you know, the pe people who are going to be in real trouble live in Cornwall and the other areas which are, um, you know, I think, uh, uh, 10 of the most, of the poor, sorry, 8 of the top, top 10 poorest areas that are beneficiaries of European grants are in the UK. Um, so, okay, there's a, 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 an impact here, but the wider impact elsewhere is yeah, going to be far greater. Yeah. I have, I have a huge concern because uh, I'm a patient at the hospital. Every four weeks I have to go and have an infusion for my illness. I uh, just chatted to the nurse today. I said, to her, where is my medication made? She looked at me, oh, you Brexit. And she went to check, it's rush. After March, will I still have my medication? It's a concern. They told me, don't worry. I said, are you a stockpiling? They laughed. They didn't tell me anything. But I am concerned. Do you think there will be an impact of Brexit? Of uh, course, okay. of course it will. That's a, a huge one. It's not like uh, it will be, all the UK will be, will be like uh, start a new life. It will be very, very, very hard. I'm already, to be honest with you, I'm already like, uh, because I have a friend of mine is in Germany. He's British and he's in Germany, open uh, in, in uh, Cologne, mm -hmm. one, and he's very successful there. So he asked me to come there to open uh, there. <laughs> um, uh, this is my option. It's, uh, if, uh, okay. if I cannot carry on, prices, and as, as I said, so what are you seeing it's as about the time, you know, the time, the, 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 the affection, like the impact is for the tariff. If there is no, like, uh, there is a tariff between UK and Europe, it will be a huge impact of, of prices. So what kind of examples of, say... Like, example, where we buy, like, flour, everything, there's some uh, ingredients, they are all from France. Like, 90%, 90%, 90 all from France. Imagine, like, you have to um, order in two days, two, uh, two days, uh, two days, uh, we, uh, we get my, uh, my delivery. After Brexit, if you get it, we get it in two days. No way. On same price, no way. It's uh, I know, I know, I know. If they, we, we, as he said, David said, if you're crashing out without a deal, without nothing, a lot of businesses will close down, including mine. I'm sure, because you cannot afford anymore. You cannot wait for three, five, one, one month to get uh, some stuff. For example, this almond carvasso, I'm not getting on the ground. I'm not gonna do almond carvasso. It start like this, slowly, slowly, slowly. The, it, this Brexit, it's like. They kill, they will kill, uh, kill us uh, slow, uh, more slowly, yeah. not like straight away, yeah. slowly. We die slowly, like till you die.
But if you have plan A, plan B, be honest. So if anything else is there, we don't know. We have to move out. We must stay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And uh, sorry, David. It's and when you move out, what happened? Job, uh, job, lo uh, job loss. I have ten uh, here, eight here, and they have another unit in North Fergie. How many staff I have? I pay and pay corporation tax, and paying the taxes, and paying this, and paying this, and paying rent, and paying business rate too. And when I extend, but because of it, I stopped. So how many money I'm giving to this? Uh, to the, all this we go. I am small, but how about the big uh, companies of the like small like me? That's the impact. How much money they give in? All this we stop. Well, I think that the small, small business we should get. Um, you know, I'm a, a single operator, self-employed, a van, some car beetles, some clients. Um, my clients fall into two, two broad groups. There's the pensioners that can't pay their bills anymore, and there are the um, cash-rich type poor people that would like their garden to look tidy when they come back to work. Um, the biggest impact for me is likely to be on discretionary spending. Um, <clears throat> you know, even a small hit to people's pockets means that they start economising on luxuries. And employing staff is very much a luxury. And um, people will start cutting their own grass rather than they need to do it. It will start. <laughs> so gardeners, au pairs, um, childminders, all of that sort of thing is likely to be affected by the fall of discretion and spending. Um, in gardening terms, there is a system, I mean, I buy, I buy plants for clients. I don't import them, but I buy them for the you know, trade out yes. and so on. There's a system in place at the moment of um, phytosanitary certification, which basically is, is about the health of, and say, the, the health of the plants being imported to stop nasty diseases like if I don't do it anymore. Um, if that system breaks down or needs to be re-engineered, the importers of plants aren't going to know where they are, and the choice available to me is going to be reduced, and obviously the, the opportunities to sell plants to plants is going to be reduced. Similarly, if there are delays in the border, um, an awful lot of with bedding plants and so on come from Holland. Um, and if those lorry loads of plants are held for two or three days at a time, then young plants are unlikely to suffer. And again, it reduces the availability of plants, even for someone as small as I am. So, yeah, on, on the other side, sorry, just one. One other thing, again, to play the devil's advocate, some people might argue that, well, if there are fewer EU citizens here um, who are setting up those one man businesses and going out of the full complaint in the then surely that means that I can charge more than my yeah. rate will go yeah. up. There will be less competition. But actually, that's not the way it works. Um, you know, I trade on my reputation, I trade on my qualification. And the price that I'm able to charge my customers is dependent on that. It's about trust. It's about turning up when you say you're going to do. It's about doing a good job and not leaving a mess. And there are all sorts of aspects like that. It's a you know it's a service industry. It's not a case of well he's cheaper than here. He will do. Um, so I don't feel that I'm in direct competition with a Pole or a Bulgarian or French. I'm in competition with anybody. Yeah. Um. Actually, on this point, I think we have an interesting alternate perspective from Alexandra, mm -hmm. just on wages. Yeah, so uh, quite a few of uh, the people who voted leave, whom I spoke to in, in Barnet, uh, said that they expect higher wages for low, <laughs> uh, low paid uh, sectors. Uh, so in particular, just to give an example, a lady who was a British lady, she worked as a cleaner, uh, and she was paid almost uh, she was paid around London living wage and she said she would definitely expect after Brexit because there will be fewer Polish and Romanian people doing 
cleaning around this area, uh, they should expect a higher wage uh, and better conditions at work as well. So in terms of the employer having better conditions for her. And this is quite a common argument that kind of came out through my conversations in Barnet that uh, people have been, been paid lower and lower compared to the cost of living uh, around Barnet and that they would expect a better future in those low paid occupations. That's something that people raised in, yeah, just being neutral here and just putting that forward to you. So. If you guys, for example, if you have to leave this country and move your business somewhere yeah. else, then Barnet residents also lose out. Mm -hmm. We also lose the, the chance to come here and have a nice coffee and a nice cake. We, you know, we yeah. love this country. Want we wanted yeah. this country to stay here. We invest in this country. We love it. I can give you several tangible ways that the the the, the, the referendum vote has already impacted both us in Barnet and uh, negatively uh, yeah, yes, the, the, the yeah. country. So we made it, but uh, what, 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 we, we do two things. We're a technology consultancy. We work with. Um, we work with foreign companies who want to come to Britain yeah. and build um, build a presence in Europe. Actually, it was always Britain was always seen as a gateway to the rest of the European Union. So we've had Australian companies, we've got an, uh, an American company knocking on the door at the moment, um, uh, Chinese companies, etc. Uh, you, 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 you land in, in the UK, you land in London, actually. And and uh, and that's the way you, you, you expand out. So we've had, for example, we had a partner in Coventry who's in the automotive, and they were they were dealing with a Chinese firm who was very actively looking to, to come into, into the UK, and then they called us and said no, the Chinese have decided because of Brexit they're going to go to Spain, and those things are happening now. You know, business is being turned away. We 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 can see that happening. The, the, um, y y you were asking before, Joel, about um, European money. Um, there is a fund called Horizon 2020. It's a European fund for businesses. The fund, well, well, they say, well, it has a number of different tranches, but some of it is investment into technology businesses, so the kind of people that we work with. And we worked with a number of UK companies as a garment business, so we had to employ people who came to our office on this high street, right next to where Theresa Villiers' office is, so that they could help us do the research, because what the European Union does is, they don't give you debt, they don't, it's not a loan, it's not equity, they don't take a part of your business, they want to promote um, uh, far, um, you know, high growth technology businesses in Europe, just because it's better if Europe has high growth technology businesses. So we were working with them, with a partner in Brussels, to help a UK uh, startup um, to access some of those funds. After Brexit, after the referendum vote, because we haven't even hit Brexit, what happened is our partner in Brussels said, we can't take anybody else on in uh, any more UK clients, we're not, we're not doing that anymore. So there, there is money that the European Union makes available for, for, for bright young people who are building businesses here that is, is not going to be accessible anymore. And interestingly, Israel pays money to the European Union so they can benefit from that fund. The countries that, are, if, if you look at the number of patents, technology patents that a small country like Israel has, um, it's huge. Countries that actually are investing in the future or you know, understanding that technology is the way forward and, 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 and that, that, that a lot of the more traditional industries are going already with globalization elsewhere, are happy to pay money into that fund. We didn't have to pay money into that fund. We could take money from that fund. We can't do that anymore. And that has had an impact on us. We had to lay off a person who was one of our researchers. That's an absolute direct impact. Um, the, the other thing as a business that we do is we work, um, we work with, 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 with technology companies to help them um, get their products to market, to help them with their product development. So we're working with a fintech right now in London and um, we've been helping them get the right people both into their technology development into their product management teams. Uh, try and get this right, but the last people we hired for them is a girl from India, a girl from Russia, um, a Polish girl, um, one English guy. Okay, and that's not because of any um, national policy or anything else, it's you're hiring people on merits. If you're a small business, every penny you spend is a choice to not spend it on something else. Every person you hire has to be the best you can get for the money you can afford. And that's what that, that's what that company is doing. Okay? 
with, 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 with what's potentially going to happen in, in March next year, that company will not be able to hire those people. They were the best ones on the market. They will therefore not be able to compete. So all of those things are having a direct impact. The best consultant we have is an Italian guy who's now doing some sort of stupid exams to be able to tell us the main characters in Dad's Army so he can qualify for a rich passport. Complete waste of his time, huge amounts of money that he's spent. Um, we, 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 we have a high policy only on merit, and if you know, and, and lots of the best people we have are from Spain and Italy, etc. We're going to suffer because we can't if we can't hire those people. The businesses we deal with, our customers, will suffer because we can't give them the best service. The best service comes from the best people. It's as simple as that. If you're a small business, it's about the people that. Work with. So, you know, jobs, that, you know, people that were coming from outside Barnet to spend their money at lunchtime from our office on Barnet High Street, they're not doing that anymore. Foreign companies who were, who were coming to spend their money with us so we could help them establish offices in Britain, pay for you know, office rents in, in Barnet or in central London, hire people in Barnet or in central London, um, buy office supplies in Barnet or in central. Those guys aren't coming anymore. That's all happened now. We're not waiting for, they're not waiting for March the 30th. Only the politicians think people are waiting. Businesses make their decisions. They've already made their decisions. So all of those things are absolute direct technical hits. Um, and all of those is, as one of us saying, we're going to die a death of a thousand cuts, we're going to die slowly, but it's yeah. already started. There was a lot of effort made um, by the writers of the report to get as diverse a voice on Brexit and Barnet as possible. I do understand that councillors and other political representatives were invited to be here today. And I also myself try very hard to get other voices to come and represent us different and alternate views on Brexit. This is a, a, a political decision made at the national level which has a local yeah. impact. This study is a brilliant piece of work and all of the stuff you're doing because yeah. actually the point is that that national decision has a fundamental impact at a, a number of different local personal levels. So what we should be doing, what our council should be doing, is making those things clear, both to themselves, because they should be planning, which they're not, and also to, to, um, to, to their residents that these are things that may well happen um, in, 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 the, in the short to medium term. Unfortunately, I don't believe any of them are going to do that, um, but that, I think, is the only thing that should be. It's like, okay, we're going to stay the same. How? There is no, they don't give you a solution. They just say in the words, like we're going to say nothing going to happen. The solution, there is no solution. That's the funny thing. It's like you go into war, and there is an enemy on the front with the uh, shard, the, the clash, you get it? And the uh, British, they go with this war with hands. We are coming like this. <laughs> the, the, the general of British, they will say, nothing going to happen to you. Go, attack, with nothing. And the other way, they have guns, they have everything. It's the same, like metaphor. Yeah. It's like say they don't have no solution, no nothing. Are we like facing? Are we nothing that gonna happen? The others, they have all the arsenal. They can they have them without arms like this. They said no, 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 no. Like suicide. Go. No. We did it before. It's called the charge of the light. Again. Yeah. Really it's like we doing this in a it's study. It's like meta metaphor. We go in with a. With, without nothing, are you gonna win? No. Now I'm, I'm playing the devil's advocate and forcing you to think of solutions where solution. we don't have a choice. The way of looking at this is to say that you know, there, there is no solution. threats and opportunities presented by Brexit. The problem that we all have is that we don't know what the threats are because we don't know the extent to which we will be Brexiting, whether it will be not Brexiting or catastrophic Brexiting yeah. or somewhere in between. And we don't know what the opportunities are because nobody's defined them. We're told in sound bites that um, there, are, there are massive opportunities out there. But that's all we're getting. I mean, these people have had 40 years to plan for exiting the, the European Union. And they have got nothing. You know, we saw that with the ERG a couple of weeks ago. They held a press conference. There was a, a whole lot of talk beforehand that they were going to be publishing their plan for Brexit. And they decided not to publish it because they were afraid it would be ridiculed. Afraid it would be ridiculed? Okay. I rest okay. So, potentially, as, as local citizens, we should be pressuring our local administration to apply to the government to say, what do you think the impact on our area is going to be? Yeah, we should do that. Yeah.
Yeah. To define, try to define at least yeah. the scenarios. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we, 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 we still end up in the scenario that David has uh, eloquently described, which yeah. is, you know, um, stuff's going to happen, what stuff we don't know. Yeah. But, you know, if, if you're talking about what should we be doing, yeah, we should be doing that. Absolutely. But the, other, the other aspect, as Ben has already said, <clears throat> is that if you're attempting to plan for contingencies, you need a resource with which to plan. Mm, yeah. Now Ben's already pointed out that Barnett Council is deeply, deeply it's in trouble in, in yeah. terms of resources. Yeah. You know, we're looking at you know, bits being chopped off of vital public services. They're not going to be setting up planning to do blue skies thinking about the possible impacts of an infinite number of Brexits. So that in itself inhibits planning and forward. Um, you know, the, the, under the challenges ahead section of the report, um, it says. Um, I'm not going to read that. But to minimise the perceived impact on local services and businesses, the experts agreed that a good Brexit in those models would deliver. <coughs> and then there are a series of things, which a series of conditions that would need to be met to qualify as a good Brexit for this area. And when you list them, you look at how likely are any of these things? <laughs> um, yeah. A new immigration policy. Well, okay, there may well be a new immigration policy. Certainty on the rights of EU citizens, a crucial consideration to mitigate against the shortage of staff in the NHS. Mutual recognition of qualifications. How far down the line is mutual recognition of qualifications going to be? Increasing government spending. I'm sorry, I'll read that again. Increasing government spending. Which <laughs> government? Um, and improving work conditions. Securing access to the EU single market, a free trade agreement with the EU, EU a Norway style model, or a common market. This is just a politics of fantasy. Mm. These are things. Yeah. If we had a magic money tree, then we could make all the services right, and we could leave Brexit, and we could all fly back at the end. But none of those things are possible. There is no good Brexit. We need to kind of reflect on what went wrong, because you know we Remainers, we made an argument. We didn't get as many votes as the other side. Maybe that was because the newspapers, the tabloids, were campaigning on this for 10 years. 40 years. <laughs> 40 years, sorry, I wasn't alive. <laughs> you know, we need to kind of think, well, people don't really understand economic arguments coming from the LSE. People want to know, well, will I be happier? Will my family be happier? Not enough. Um, focus has been put on the fact that this is a local issue, a personal issue, and our children's issue, and our old people's issue, um, and, and, and this is trying to do that. Well, it makes and the so connection between Whitehall and Westminster, and Chicken Bar. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not stuff happening out there. It's yeah. happening right here now, and that's really important. And what would you like us to do with it? I would like to see a little more about the, the social impact. Perhaps yeah. you know, this, this question of the, the hostile environment, you know, the, the way it changes people's attitudes. Mm -hmm. and I, think that's really mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. really quite important. Yeah. And that's, that's the one thing that I felt was missing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this is very good. Yeah. And what I'd like to see is what the start, I'd like to see the smash the work of the public time. Yeah, I'd like and to see it to see through the, the door of every resident. To see a, <laughs> a proper debate being initiated. Mm -hmm. Well, that was our idea, was, and that if we did a little film of today, or that maybe then we could reproduce this debate mm -hmm. in other parts of... Mm -hmm. Well, I was suggesting to Simon, I'm sorry, Simon, but on the spot here, but you're in team room. Yeah, yeah. Simon might like to be a co-sponsor or something, you know, in partnership with the LSE. We wouldn't necessarily involve any resources for the other times. But Thank you. You, know, you could get leverage from the Times to get a more balanced set of responses. Well, the Times a... could get a story ready made from people arguing with us over mm. the croissants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, was my, my, my original idea, I thought if we could, I was actually thinking of teaming up with local radio or local television. television. <laughs> and we had long discussions with Channel 4 and it didn't mm. work out. But I think that's exactly what we should be doing, is yeah. now following it up. Yeah. And if the time Barnett is into it.
That would be great. Yeah. So on the very important final note of there are critical issues that have to be solved and they have to be addressed and acknowledged at the local level.